I also wanted to give my thoughts on the West Wing because I did enjoy that episode. Uh, West, West, yeah, that that was one. Of, West Wing is one of my favorite shows of all time as well. So I, I would have had no problem talking about that one. We'll, we'll I, probably do another Advocates, and we'll probably just pick up right with that one as her pick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So save that. We'll we'll have an actual thing on that because I want to watch that and discuss it too. Because yeah, because I and and I've never watched The West Wing before, so that was my first exposure to the show. Because I had when it originally aired, I again I was a teenager and I was assuming that this is a preachy show about boring political stuff. But I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's about about the same for me before, yeah. So, yeah. And then I, I started watching The West Wing on Netflix, but at the time I was watching it, I was also watching Newsroom, and I was just oh. sorkened out. I was like, okay. I can't take so, it more. So sorkened. I watched this episode, and I was amazed <laughs> at how non-preachy and easy to digest it is. It doesn't, it, it didn't preach at you, it didn't, like, bombard you with a bunch of political mumbo-jumbo, like, only insiders would understand. Mm. Um, it just gave you like these actual real people who just happen to work in government. Yeah. Well, because they would talk about policy, they talk about politics, but then they would throw in something that you realize these are real people. They talk about something that's going on in their home life, or they throw in a joke here and there. And, right. and Aaron Sorkin's dialogue, like, I don't think there's anyone right now that can write dialogue like Aaron Sorkin, and it's like the quick wit, the snappy banter, the 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 flow, and I think that's what attract. Like you could watch them talking in a boardroom uh, for like 20 minutes, and it would never get boring because. Well, Aaron Sorkin's an mm-hmm. in, in yeah. tour. Like uh, um, mm-hmm. there are certain people that you can just you know who it is just by the writing. Mm-hmm. You know, Joss Whedon. Although Joss has been imitated so many times, that the really good imitators can. You can kind of confuse sometimes just because. Sometimes, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Ever since, ever, ever since Buffy the Vampire Slayer became successful, there have been people trying to emulate Joss Whedon's style, hoping some of that magic rubs off on them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like Brian yeah. Fuller. I mean, with with Hannibal, it's a little bit different. It's it's amazing as well, of course. But if you've ever watched like Pushing Daisies, like the quick snappy dialogue of that mm-hmm. show is, is stunning. It's like they say so much. <laughs> it's like yeah. I, I don't you don't even want to see the scripts for that. They have to be like just. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to go back and watch Pushing Daisies because I hadn't seen that. Also, Wonderfalls. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, the chat just froze for me, so I didn't know if. Uh, oh. I was being heard. <laughs> I don't know. Did we lose Tyson? No, I think Tyson's still there. Oh, Tyson's kind of... He's a, he's a frozen screen right now. Tyson, you there? Tyson, can you hear us? I think we lost him. I think we lost Tyson. Oh, damn. Let me and see if I can... He's the host him. of the podcast. <laughs> we hijacked him. Yes. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> So yeah. we're running the podcast now. <laughs> All right. So what do you really think of Sense8? I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> terrible, terrible. I can't believe we missed to watch that. I know, man. What the hell? <laughs> 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 just kidding. It's actually very good. Yes. Give it a chance, Netflix watchers out there. Give it a chance. Yes, give it a chance. Fire up Netflix and watch it. Yes, exactly. Watch Daredevil first and Nar- Narcos. Have you seen Narcos? I have not. Oh my god. Watch Narcos. It's okay. were you a fan of Entourage? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my, my reference is gonna go out the drain. But for any Entourage fan out there, Narcos is what Median would be if it were good. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'll, awesome. I'll, yeah. I'll check it out. I mean I have Netflix, I'm paying for it. Might as well use it. Exactly. That's what I say. Exactly. Well, I find that right now Netflix is they have the best programming right now. Like I think it yeah. it's a lot better than even HBO at times cuz there's just so much of it and and the show and they're taking real chances. You should just see that with Sense8. Sense8 is not a show that what any network would pick up. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. never. Yeah. Not in the way it is. No. Um yeah, Netflix 
should be applauded for their content. Absolutely. The way that they're like mm-hmm. putting out so much of it. There's bound to be something for everybody now. Oh yeah. They're taking chances on in, in every way. And, and that's something that I think is it's paying off for them because like you said, they have their artier shows. They have their more mainstream uh, I, material. And, I think Netflix yeah. jumping into the original programming game is the kick in the pants that that was needed yes. for people to real you know to really change the game in terms of what is programming what can programming be you know because if you I don't know if you watched the upfront or you know you saw the new pilots for the networks uh, I I've kind of gone away from network TV now it's just yeah it's if you I, I can't that, do it yeah yeah. Like I'll watch like Agents of Shield just because of of the whole Joss Whedon factor or the fact that it's part of the MCU, but right. like that even that show just pales in comparison to something like Daredevil. Like oh yeah, it, it it just, Daredevil is just mm-hmm. amazing, and yeah, well, after watching like Agents of Shield and how I mean, you know you don't expect you know Daredevil surpassed my expectations on what a Marvel universe show could be. Yeah. I, yeah, and I think I've said that many times. And I'm looking forward to Jessica Jones now, which is uh, announced for November. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm very much looking forward to that. I hope that keeps the quality bar as high as Daredevil. I'm, I'm sure it will. I mean, just the casting alone. Like, they got, uh, what's your name? I think Kristen Ritter. Is that who they got for Jessica Jones? Uh, Kristen Ritter. Yeah, who I've been a fan of for a while, and since like even the Breaking Bad, even before that. Um, it just looks like an awesome show, and I think I think it's it's nice to get another female superhero uh, or female hero uh, right. into the mix. Yeah, that's another thing that's interesting. This is going to be a female led hero show, mm-hmm. um, and it's going to be very it's going to be very different from anything anybody is doing.